Yo, what's going cool? on? Today's video, I got the how to make a kill counter. This this is the updated version of this tutorial I made back in August of 2023, so uh, almost a year ago. So I went to do an updated version of that. I just like making updated versions of stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So you guys know, um, it's very basic. You guys know how like you have your leaderboard, your basic leaderboard right here, the default one. And then you have kills at the top, and then it'll say kill. Like it's it's pretty much essentially the same way a battlegrounds kills works and stuff the kill leaderboard works and stuff like minus you know total kills and all that and stuff but yeah like you know when you kill someone it goes plus one up here and then it'll display the total amount of kills so yeah so i'm gonna show you guys how to make that so let's go ahead and get straight into it okay first things first is go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage rename that remote event to combat event right because we're going to need to make a basic m1 combat system real quick and stuff right so if you watch my other combat videos, you'll see the code is very familiar. If you already have that code, I just recommend pulling that out and stuff. I'm going to make some modifications to it to um, add the whole thing where, where we have kills and we, uh, keep track of them and all that. So yeah. So once you've added your uh, combat mode event, you're also going to need two sounds. Well, these are optional, but these are the M1 sounds and stuff. You guys can get them from the toolbox and stuff. Let me go ahead and open up starter player, insert a local script into starter player scripts. And then I'm going to rename the script to combat script in parentheses. I'm going to put local. Then I'm going to delete print hello world. First things first, I'm going to get the user input service. I'm going to say local UIS is equal to game get service, user input service. Then I'm going to say local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. And then lastly, I'm going to create a variable for our attack number. So local attack number. Is equal to one i'm not going to do too much explaining here because the point of this video is really to talk about the kill counting part portion and stuff if you want me to like if you want to hear an in-depth explanation of like how all the code works and stuff for the m1 system then go watch those videos like the combat hitbox and all that stuff but yeah then we're going to set up you know our uh input function so i'm going to say uis that begin connect function in parentheses put input comma process enter if input dot user input type is equal to item that user input type okay that user input type that keyboard and not process enter then if input the key code is equal to enum dot key code dot e oh wait, wait, sorry sorry i did that wrong i did that wrong i just realized sorry sorry i'm moving too fast my fault not keyboard sorry i meant uh mouse click so mouse button one yeah yeah there you go if you remember it's a good mouse button i forgot we're not doing key buttons but yeah then i'm going to say if attack number is equal to one all right then you'll say attack number is equal to two then comment event fire server in quotation marks you're going to put m1 that'll be the name of the event comma left punch first will be left punch then do else you're going to type the word else then copy and paste what we just wrote control c control v then of course combine the else if together all right and then of course you want to change this to two and then change the two to one all right then you want to change the left punch to right punch, right? Let's go ahead and double check. Okay, I'm good. All right, and just like that, we're done with the local script. Let's go ahead and move to the server side. So insert a server script into server script service. You're gonna to wanna to rename the script to combat script in parentheses. You're gonna to wanna to put server, right? And then of course, you're gonna need two animation stuff. Simply click the plus icon, type animation, insert it, and then uh, rename them and throw your animation ID inside the animation ID property. Then you're just gonna put them inside of the script, right? So the leap print hello world and we get the sound service. First, I'm gonna say local SS equal to game, get service, quotation mark sound service. Then I'm gonna get the combat remote event. So we could just copy and paste this, save ourselves some time, control C, control V on the next line. Then let's set up the first function. So this will be when players join. So game.players, that player added, connect function, and parentheses put PLR, which is short for the player. Enter. First things first, we're gonna create the uh, leader stats folder as well as the kills value. Then we're gonna create the player's hitbox. So I'm gonna say local leader stats. This is the actual kill counter stuff. So leader stats is equal to instance that no rotation marks. You're gonna put folder parenthesis to the player. Then leader stats that name is equal to rotation marks. You're gonna put leader stats. Then you're gonna create a uh, variable for kills. So kills is equal to instance that new. This will of course be a number value. Parent this to leader stats. Then you're gonna say kills that name is equal to kills. Then kills that value is of course by default equal to zero. Then you're gonna set up the second function. You're gonna say player dot character added connect function right in parentheses put character. Okay, that's nice spell character character. Enter. Then we're gonna create a hitbox. Gonna 
per se local hitbox is equal to instance that new quotation marks part turn this to the player's characters humanoid root part enter you're then going to say hitbox that name is equal to hitbox all right and then hitbox that anchored is equal to false hitbox dot massless is equal to true hitbox dot can collide is equal to false hitbox dot transparency is equal to one unless you're testing hitbox dot size i went with it oh is equal to vector three dot no i personally went with five comma six comma five point five enter and then hitbox dot color again this is for if you're testing color three dot new one comma zero comma zero all right and then last you're gonna say hitbox pivot two character dot humanoid root part dot c frame and then lastly we'll weld it together so let's create a weld constraint so weld constraint is equal to instance that new weld constraint parent this to the hitbox then we say weld constraint dot part zero is equal to hitbox weld constraint part one is equal to character dot humanoid root part and then just like that we're done with the first function now we can go ahead and create our second final function. So you're going to say combat event dot on server event next function and print the put PLR with a show for the player comma event type comma arg one enter. You're going to create a variable for the player's character. So local character is equal to player uh, character. Oh, sorry, meant player dot character. And then we're going to use the if statement. You're going to say if event type is equal to mutation marks m one enter. We'll first create the animation track. So local at is equal to character that humanoid that animator load animation and then you're going to say script regular bracket quotation marks um oh sorry, sorry yeah regular brackets no quotation marks can put arg one there right then you're going to say at play and then we're going to uh we're going to do some ray casting so first first let's get the start position so start position is equal to character dot humanoid root Part dot hitbox dot position. Now let's get the direction. Let's scroll down a little. Direction is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot c frame dot look vector. And then let's create the raycast param. So raycast params equal to raycast params dot new. Right? And then we say raycast params dot filter type is equal to enum dot filter that raycast filter type that exclude then raycast params that filter descendants instances is equal to special bracket you're going to say character get descendants right no space in between and then we're going to officially create the ray so local ray is equal to workspace raycast start position direction raycast params and then when you use if statements i'm going to say if ray the one make sure you know the ray fired and ray that instance so it made contact with an instance and ray that instance that parent Find first child humanoid to ensure it's either an NPC or a player. And we also needed one more check. So radar instance that parent that humanoid that health is greater than zero. So of course, because we only want this to work, we only want this to proceed if they're you know alive. So enemy character, let's create a variable for an enemy character is equal to ray that instance that parent, right? And then you're gonna say ss.dbz punch down play, right? Oh, I actually forgot to put the, the original one. So I said stop punch, regular punch and stuff. Like I said, this is optional. You guys don't have to do all this. You, you, don't, you don't have to do the sounds portion, but yeah. Then of course, we're gonna do some damage. So enemy character dot humanoid that health is less than equal to five. I went five, all right? And then after you're gonna use the if statement. So you're gonna say if, here's where it comes into play. If enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than equal to zero, which means they're dead, then player dot leader stats that kills that value is plus equal one and then boom, just like that we are done let's go ahead and test to make sure this works as always if you guys don't access to any one of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description how to recommend that and i completely forgot to insert a rig okay so oh wait Wait, do, wait do, do the enemies need a hitbox on your monitor? Um, no, they should be fine. Wait, no, they might. Wait, no, yeah, they do need. Hold on, okay, hold on.
I need to give I need to give him a hitbox. Oh, by the way, here's how you would test it. So you would go inside of the human and root part, right? You would get the hitbox. You would simply just copy it. Then you would just go to your NPC, go to the human and root part, right click, paste into into the human and root part, and then now now everything should work. You, you should be able to test on. Why is it like? What the wait and I, I know what i forgot yeah i always for every time i swear i forget this every time direction times you need you also need to multiply the direction so direction times three i recommend doing times three but you could go for like some between three and five but yeah there we go okay there we go so yeah so if i just spam this obviously i don't have a cooldown so it's gonna obviously allow me to do this so yeah so i ran into an issue before where it kept like you know adding kills since they're considered dead and stuff so that's why we have uh this check right here to make sure that they have more than zero health so yeah let's see make a kill, basic kill counter and stuff and then you can just integrate the code to do it works with like you know weapons guns and stuff so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video definitely leave a like subscribe if you're new thank you guys for watching the video thank you guys for all the love and support i'm showing all my videos I really do appreciate it. i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching